Ooh, do I have a fun top five tier list for you today? Number five, yes, we are going straight into it. Here's a game that was such a huge hit, pre-reduced social interactions for my group of friends, family, and that game is Medium. Now, Medium is a super easy card game. You can learn it in literally less than five minutes, and here is what you're doing on your turn. One player is gonna play one card. They are the starting medium. For instance, let's say I play the card Chef. Now the person to your left is also gonna play a card and they play beach. Now you both look at the cards and both of you are gonna stare into each other's souls and try to sync up because your goal is to say the same word that you are both thinking of related to beach and chef. If you both get that word, that is called a mind meld. So if you both count down from three and both of you say fish, you'll score a first attempt token. But if let's say you say fish and your partner says crab, both of you are now gonna take a second attempt using the clues that you've just said. So now on the table, you have fish and crab, but you can't use any of the original words like beach and chef. And then you try again for three points. If you still miss it, you still have a third attempt at one point. And turns are gonna keep going until you draw these crystal ball cards. So your group's psychic energy keeps growing and growing until the third and final one is drawn and your energy is just too much and it shatters the flipping crystal wall. That's pretty much how the game works. And you can play in teams, you can play with two players, you can play with special power cards, like this one, for instance, lets you hijack another team's mind meld attempt, and then you can, in turn, attempt to grab some points as well. Trust me, Medium is such a unique party game because it really is going to test the relationship that you have with the group that you're playing with. It gets so tense and is so involved because the way you earn points is meant for your group to literally be like clawing your way up to the top. It's never been boring for me. It's never felt repetitive because there are a ton of cards to get through. The combinations change. So even if I get chef this round and someone else gets chef you know, on another round, they could be using your clue and saying food like in a different game and someone didn't shuffle their cards you know, enough. It's honestly kind of funny because now it's like, hey, you're hijacking my flipping clue. This party game is where I wanna see future party games head towards. It has such a unique theme. It has such a cool way to grab, you know, new people to board games and a completely new way for people to just play and like think about it. The only downside, the only thing I want you to be wary of when playing this is consider the group that you are going to be playing this game with. Make sure you kind of like read the room and see if the group of people that you're playing with are gonna be open to losing or are okay with being frustrated because you are more likely to not sync up with people. Some people are okay with that. You know, some people don't take that as well. I've seen this game either, you know, not fit at all for the group that I'm playing with, or it could also be the most amazing, memorable night ever. There is literally no in between. For my core group, all they wanna do is play this game. So there's that. That is my number five, medium. Now let's go on a major jump to the other side of the spectrum, easily the heaviest game on this list, probably the heaviest game that you can find at Target currently, and that is Gloomhaven. If you have heard of Gloomhaven, which I'm sure you have, this is an entry level version to that game. And it's going to be especially helpful if you are prepping to play through actual Gloomhaven or Frosthaven that is coming soon to Kickstarter backers, hopefully. Now Jaws of the Lion is a dungeon crawler. So what does that mean? A dungeon crawler means you're going to pretty much pick a character and then you're gonna work your way through a campaign and read through scenario books and pretty much evolving with your character. You're gonna be fighting monsters, you're gonna be facing different challenges, you're gonna be leveling up. You can also play this solo, controlling two characters, or you can also play it with a group because it is a cooperative game. One of the highlights for me about Jaws of the Lion is definitely by far the story and the tutorial. It makes learning Gloomhaven, for the most part, uh, really easy to learn. This game will literally tell you to set up these monster cards first, and then place your miniature here, and then put your cards in you know, this set, and then start battling and moving your character. It breaks down the rules and the jargon in a fairly manageable way. I rarely talk about pricing on the channel, but for like 40 bucks, 
I don't think any game at Target will offer you any more value than the amount of value that you're getting for Jaws of the Lion. You are getting a whole lot of content for just 40 bucks, and this video is not sponsored by anyone, but this is easily a 70 to $80 game for the amount of content and story and guidance that you're paying for. You have a ton of hours of game time that is packed into this core box. What is daunting though about Jaws of the Lion is that it literally took me about an hour alone to just set up all the components. So that is a little premise about, you know, what you're getting yourselves into. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff in here. How to organize all these bags and tokens and punch out all these things. And there's just a lot of prep work. Good thing is after that, you don't have to do it ever again. Now, on top of that, people will say that this game is way more accessible than Gloomhaven. I haven't played Gloomhaven, but that honestly kind of, kind of scares me a little bit because this is a heavy game despite you know, the tutorial walking you through it step by step. It took me about two hours to just go through and you know learn and play at the same time. And this was only for the first scenario. But the reason why I'm recommending it for my number four is that it was a really fun experience because you know essentially what you're doing in your turn is that you have this set of six cards to start with. These cards are gonna allow your characters to move and attack. And each of your characters will take turns and then the monster will take his turn and then move and attack as well. For the first scenario, it's super simple. Your goal is to just kill all the monsters on the map and survive. But with each sequential scenario, it's going to be different. Different map, different parts of the story to unlock and uncover. Your character is going to get stronger because you know, you'll be getting access to different cards. Yes, it's a lot of information, but that's why they break it down over like five scenarios. It's really easy to follow. There are, however, a few minor rule confusions. Like for example, in one part of the rulebook, it says take the 20 card deck, but in reality, it's actually 18 because you're moving cards the wording's a little bit funky here and there. Nuances like that happen throughout the rulebook and they may put you off. That's why I said, for the most part, it is very easy to learn and play. Bottom line though, it is a solid game with a very immersive story. You have a ton of hours to sink your teeth into. I also want to mention that typically in campaign games, you don't finish it all in one run. So you would need to save the game. And in order to save in this game, it's super awesome, super convenient because all you do is package everything in these little awesome envelopes. And then next time you play, just pull them out, take out whatever you need come back to it and that's it. If you're looking for a game that is going to give you your money's worth, if you like story-driven games, if you like games where you are you know, progressing in a campaign solo or with the group, definitely, definitely recommend checking out Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. I'm also tempted to make a tutorial on this one, short, condensed, to the point, to just get you up and running through scenario one in like 20, 15, maybe even 10, maybe 10's probably pushing it, but 10 to 15 minutes. So if you're interested in a tutorial like that, if you wanna see me kind of tackle that, let me know down in the comments below and I will try my best to make something that is more accessible. All right, moving on to number three, we are going to dial it back. This is a game that has won so many awards and recognition and actually just hit target shells. That game is Wingspan. that I've covered on my channel. If you want to see that super ancient tutorial that I did way back when, I will link it right here. Now, one reason why you might not want to pick up Wingspan, honestly was actually one of the first reasons why I didn't pick it up at first initially, was because of the theme. Birds. Initially, I was like, eh, not my favorite. But don't let that fool you because this is such a good, fun, extremely popular game. In Wingspan, you are a bird enthusiast. You have four things that you can do on your turn. You can get food, you can use that food to buy birds, you can play birds from your hand, and you can also lay eggs. It is an engine building board game, and if you haven't played an engine builder before, ooh, you need to try at least one before you turn away from board games because engine builders are some of my favorite types, some of my favorite genres of board gaming. Here's the reason why, it's because engine builders always build anticipation. It is giving you the ability to build up an empire. You're gonna generate so much stuff if you combo things correctly, hence the name engine builder. Wingspan is that with the bird theme. The more resources that you get, the more birds you can buy, the more birds you can combo together because each one has a different power and eventually towards the end of the game, you're gonna go off because things just get activated back to back to back from all things 
that you've accumulated on your player board, which by the way, is a really cool looking journal. Components wise, Wingspan seriously is such a good looking game from the artwork to the birdhouse dice tower. You can even get custom resource tokens on Etsy or on Stonemaier's website for this game. I think there's even like a mobile version of this game now on Steam. It's popular and for good reason because it's just really fun. And the number one reason for me why it is on my top five list of games to get a target is because of the pacing. The pacing of this game is not the actual you know, amount of time that you're spending on your turn, but rather what I mean by pacing is that the game speeds up as you are accumulating more and more birds and resources. It feels good to build up this empire of birds. And it's one of the rare games that I play with very minimal player interaction because you're so busy just thinking about how to manage you know, everything on your own player mat that you don't really crave that player interaction. So if you and your group don't prefer to confront each other, if you prefer to play games at your own accord, this actually might be one of the best games on today's list for you. And right before we move to the last and final two board games on today's list, if you are enjoying today's video, if you like the little cinematic spin to add two board games, please consider subscribing to the channel and also I'll link my socials right here. Now to add on to the nature themed games, clocking in at my number two that you can pick up at Target is Parks. This game would probably be ranked one on my fiance's and um, my sister-in-law's board game list in general. But literally all you do when you play this game is double team and sabotage me. So there's that. Of course it would be their number one game. But overall, we all love this game. The theme is one of the most relatable and coolest ones. In parks, you're playing as a hiker or technically you're playing as two hikers who make their way down a trail. The thing is you can never walk backwards. So as soon as you go past a certain tile, you can't go back to it and you must walk forward. Now, as you visit each location, you're gonna gain resources that you'll also use to buy national parks. That is the core of the game. It's really simple, it is incredibly fun, and surprisingly cutthroat. Why? Because you are scrambling to get to different tiles first because only one hiker can be at a tile at a time. If one person is like capitalizing on that particular tile, you're gonna be at a major disadvantage. At the end of each hike, you'll also be competing to reserve different parks that are randomized on a pile on the table. And you'll also be competing to see who goes first in the next round as well. As the trail gets longer, do not let for one second the theme fool you because it is a very competitive game. There is a ton of player confrontation, a lot of resource management. Resource management means how you are thinking about how to spend your money, your currency, all the resources that you've gained as you're visiting different locations. Really easy to learn, inviting game that you can learn in less than 10 minutes. The player counts go from one to five. The sweet spot I think is definitely around like three players because having that one middle person really helps mitigate you know locations that you are committing to. A third person also makes it much more interesting than two players. Reason why is because the decisions that you're making have way more weight to them with three players. It's way more unforgiving, but more fun at three. I feel like two players for this game is a little bit repetitive because your decisions you know, are way more flexible around which tiles that you want to visit. But three really makes a world of a difference in like carefully managing you know, where you're going to prioritize uh, your hikers, the different elements that you're gaining, the different types of gear you're going for, you know, who's going to interrupt your plans. That third person really makes a huge difference. FYI, gear helps you get different perks in this game. Hands down though, Parks has like one of the best inserts I've ever seen. Game trays, you have knocked it out of the park with this one. Inserts, by the way, they matter, okay? Because they help you put your games away faster. It helps you set up faster. And therefore, you get more game time and less time wasted fiddling around with your components. The last thing I wanna mention about Parks is that they also have an expansion, which I'm not sure is available on Target, but it is called Nightfall, just so you're aware. I think that it makes Parks really that much better because there are a lot of new things. For example, they have wild resources. In the base game, you have these you know, wild tokens. They don't have as much of an impact in the base game because you get a good surplus of resources, so wild tokens aren't as valuable to obtain. Nightfall, the expansion, fixes that by making them worth two resources each. Alternatively, you could also just implement that rule in the base game. I think that one rule alone makes a world of a difference in making the player experience that much better. But there are also tents involved, which allows you to camp at different spots and copy trail sites. That's new. That adds some new dynamicism to the game. Definitely, definitely check out Nightfall if you like parks. And now we get to the final spot. This game always 
like snuck under the radar for me. Everyone always talked about it. I've seen hundreds, hundreds of posts on it, but I just, for whatever reason, never decided to get it until now. And I'll be honest, I've only played it once at the time, as of the time of this recording, but I now want every single expansion. I already know 100% that this is going to be a major hit in my group. That is how much potential, how much of an impact that this game has already had on me. By the time that you're watching this video, I know that I've played it at least two more times. We are talking about Villainous. This game shot up to my number one spot so easily and I'm very, very late and long overdue, as I said, to play this game, but number one, Villainous. This game is a very accessible, lightweight game. It's one of the most balanced games in terms of new players and seasoned players because it's super easy to learn for new players, but it's also asymmetric and deep enough for seasoned board gamers as well. The big selling point for this game is of course, you know, it being the Disney theme, but with a twist. As implied in the name, Villainous is all about playing as classic Disney villains. In the base game, you have six villains to choose from. You have Jafar, Maleficent, Captain Hook, Queen of Hearts, Prince John, and Ursula. Here's how the game works. You pick one of those villains to play with, and then you have your own world, your own realm to wreak havoc in. Everyone is going to be moving their characters in different parts of their realms in order to activate different actions, like for instance, gain resources, use those resources to play cards, discard cards so you can search through your deck, summon heroes in another player's realm that in turn is going to mess with other players and ruin their plans. However, where this game shines is that with every villain, they are asymmetric. That means that every villain has a different way to play. They have a different way to win the game. For example, if you play as Jafar, your goal is to get the magic lamp to Sultan's palace and to also control Genie. How fitting is that to the actual story? If you play Maleficent, your objective instead is to make sure that you curse every single territory in your realm. As soon as someone finishes their objective, the game is over. Here's why I love this game and I've only played the base game. When you think of a Disney board game or just, you know, games based on pop culture, you usually think about a reskin of a board game like Disney Monopoly or Life Edition with Disney or Seen It Disney Style. This is not that. This is a real, real board game, meaning there is substance. It is way more interesting because you can learn it in like less than 10 minutes, but the actions that you are performing requires you to think. The game is different every single time you play, and even if you play as the same character each time, there is still always going to be a different way for you to try and reach your objective because of the different cards and because of the player interaction. This, this is why Villainous is my top board game at Target. I love games where you're playing and interacting with other players. For me, that is the most satisfying part and why I love board games so much. It's being able to sabotage other people. I live for that stuff. I love it. And you can do it in this game practically every round because when you land on this space with the lightning cloud icon, you can draw two cards from what is called a fate deck. And then you can summon heroes or different items and effects that will interrupt everyone else's plans. This mechanic alone is what keeps gameplay so freaking entertaining. It's so dynamic and I love playing as a villain versus you know being the heroes in practically every other game. So that is an extra plus for me as well. Table presence here is also very inviting for new players, meaning it just looks really good on the table and it makes people want to play that game. You have these unique minis, the resource tray, the artwork, it's got people gathering and spending resources and trust me, new players just love having a bunch of currency on their table so just you know, seeing this pile alone will make people wanna play and do nothing but gather resources and use them to play cards. Last thing, you might be wondering, wait, are these all the villains that they have? No, actually, they have expansions. They have a ton of expansions, all different colors, all with, you know, new villains across these three expansions. I think there are like nine in these three. The one I want though, of course, is going to be the Marvel one. This one has Thanos, Hela, Taskmaster, Killmonger, and Ultron. And they also are releasing a Loki themed one in August. I think they also have Modok in there. Um, I don't know who Madame, Madame Mask is, but you know, Loki and Modok, super excited for those. It's gonna be crazy, excited for it. I would love to get my hands on it and it's, it's gonna be amazing. Those, my friends, are my top five board game recommendations to get the next time you stop by at your local Target. 
My question now to you is, did my list align with yours? Are there any other games that maybe should have made this list? Maybe you can knock out a few of these with your own recommendations by the time I do this for a fall holiday board game buying guide this year. Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you grabbed a game or two from this list, let me know. Thanks for watching and have fun shopping.